Now we study another interesting issue called mining periodic movement patterns. Usually the sensor may register movement data, but in many cases you may have very sparse data. Just giving you a very interesting example. For example, animal scientists or bird scientists, they would like to study animal movements and bird movements. They put sensors on the, on the body of those animals. But remember, the sensor usually is pretty small. On the other hand, it will last, it will need to be last for a long time. Like for study bird migration, a sensor on the body of the bird is expected to last for a year. Okay. So how could a sensor could be lasting for a year without charging the battery? Okay. The only thing you can think is we will get a very sparse data. Like 24 hours, we may only register one GPS location. Although 24 hours, the bird may fly very far, far away. Then if we want to find a periodicity, the interesting thing could be, it's very hard to find the periodicity if there's no overlap, just because the data is so sparse. Then just to look at how to, thinking about bird flying patterns. Okay. We just think the bird, suppose this place is a nest of the bird. Okay. Then, if you just look at the bird, how they exactly fly with a very sparse sensor data, you will not be able to find any meaningful periodic patterns of bird flying. However, you may find every night, every evening, the birds were flying back to the nest. <clears throat> In the morning, it will fly out from the nest. So from the nest point of view, or from the cluster center point of view, it does have some periodicity. Okay. Then we may take such location as our reference spots. That means the reference spot spots can be detected using density-based method because they come back you know, quite frequently. Okay. Then with this, if we do just based on the nest, we say well, when they are in the nest, when they are out of the nest, so we will be able to find uh, nice and interesting periodic patterns. That means the periodicity is more ob obvious when we look at the binary sequence like in and out of the nest. So that's an interesting one. You probably can see if we only think about the nest, the periodicity will be able to be detected for each reference spot using Fourier transform and autocorrelation. Now we we'll look at an interesting example on mining periodic patterns with sparse data. So in this is a real data set about birds fly in North America. Okay. So this actually accumulate three-year bird migration data, they are very, very sparse. However, if you, based on the dense points, you take those dense region as reference spots, you will be able to find a periodicity because in the winter, they're going to fly down to the south. In the summer, they may fly back to the north. In the middle, they may fly some places to you know to have some other activities so you will find a few interesting reference spots once we detect periodicity based on those reference points we will be able to summarize such patterns in a periodic way because we find a period and we find the nice periodic patterns so this is an interesting study based on the very sparse data we will be able to mine periodic behaviors for moving objects. Then the previous study, we will assume there's like a, you know, the periodicity can be detected because the period is sort of knowing. Okay. 
then in many cases, the time-related data can be scattered and sparse. For example, phone calls at a location, it could be very sparse. And then for such sparse data, if we look at the time, we will be able to map the calling time in the sequence based on the time, you will say 5, 13, 18, 26, 29. If you map this you know, into the time sequence, it's very hard to find a periodicity. Okay. Then what about if we can guess the right period, like t? If t is 20, if we guess it right, you probably can easily see they form a very dense cluster. Okay. However, if you got a wrong guess on the period, likely these mapping will be you know, scattered along the, the whole period. Okay. So that means we, the projection on the true period, it will show a highly skewed cluster distribution. Based on this observation, some in-depth study and algorithm has been developed to uh, to detect the true pattern and mining event periodicity from incomplete observations. So in this whole session, we discussed a few interesting issues. We studied mining spatial associations, mining spatial co-location patterns, mining and aggregating patterns over multiple trajectories, mining semantics reach movement patterns, and mining periodic movement patterns. In this session, we actually use the following research papers. If you would like to know more, we strongly encourage you to read those research papers. Thank you.